you know, in preparing to apply, right, firm idea research, research interest, contact the people you think you might like to work with, contact potential reference letter writers. So you're, uh, part of the application involves refer uh, reference letters from people who know you. It's a good idea ahead of time, right about now, to start uh, contacting the people who might write you reference letters. Yep. Do they have to be professors? Uh, they don't have to be professors, uh, but they're, I would say, the most compelling, eh, it depends on the program, the most compelling applications that come into my program are applications that have multiple reference letters, two, in this, two reference letters from people who do research in domains like, like ours. The, right? um, they're, they're, uh, so here's some reference letters that might get weighted a little less heavily. Uh, well, for sure, a colleague in your program is not a good, you know, don't, don't get colleagues of yours who study with you, who can vouch that you're a good student. That won't carry much weight at all. Uh, a graduate student, this is where we get into the gray area, a graduate student, a TA, right, who knows you quite well. You know, honestly, I'd say keep pushing. Get two faculty members to write reference letters for you. After all, you're talking about getting into a program and working in an academic environment and the people who have the most experience with the kind of skills that are needed to, to do well in those environments are people who've, who've been there a long time. Right? So you, what, you're, what you should be aiming for is to get letter writers or letters from writers with a lot of expertise in uh, the program that you're headed toward. Faculty members. Graduate students can be lovely, and, and they can know a lot about you. Uh, but they're relatively early in the, early in the process of, of, of acquiring expertise about what it takes to be a great graduate student. Okay? Um, about contacting potential reference letter writers. They're, they're, uh, the letters that you want to get written for you are going to contain specific information that helps distinguish you as a potentially excellent student in a graduate program from somebody who might not be so excellent. In order to get that information, it's ideal to have somebody who knows you quite well. Maybe you've, taken a, uh, you've done an undergraduate honors thesis and worked directly with an undergraduate honors thesis supervisor. They're ideal for this purpose, right? But you might be saying, but wait a second, I need more than one. I've only done one honors thesis. In my program, we have a number of small laboratory-based courses where, for example, I teach a course often in the winter. It has 16 students in it, 16 to 20 students. I get to know all those students quite well. They write a couple of papers, I look at their writing, they each give an oral presentation, I look at their oral communication skills. I ease at the end of the course, in fact, I tell, I tell the students, I say, now you may be thinking about graduate school, kind of experience we've had here, I could write a reference letter for you because I know you. I've seen your writing, I've seen your oral presentation skills, I, I've looked at you in a research context, I think I know you, all of you well enough, so if you're interested, see, small classes like that. Uh, can uh, point to other faculty members who could write reference letters for you. Great big classes with 300 people in them, right, where you got an A in the course and the prof doesn't know you any better than they know the other 299 people, not the greatest person to ask for, for a letter, right, for a research-based uh, graduate program. Yes. Um, okay, so this is kind of like a work placement. Somebody who's your supervisor, right, in a work placement. Um, well, what does everybody else think? Depends what you're going to, doesn't it? Like if you're going to a research area, then it might not carry as much weight. Might not. But, but let's make the opposite argument. Is there any way in which a workplace supervisor could speak to your performance in a research setting? Yes. Well, how? Well, Why? I've been working at a with the city for 10 years, or five years rather. Sorry, my sister's 10 years. Uh, she just got a pen yesterday, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um, and I do a lot of work that I wouldn't necessarily have to do or should do just because there's extra time and I make the effort to finish it. So I think if it's talking about, if you're doing a program where you have to be determined, getting my supervisor to write something about that would definitely show that I am determined to get to the answer. Even though it's not in a research-based, um, aspect, having those life skills and being able to apply them in other ways are still a valuable 
uh, aspect to who you are as a person. Yeah, I think one thing that you said was right on the nose, and that is that I, I work in this environment where I often get problems and I'm told to do these three things, but you know what? I do three or four or five other things to get a really good answer to that question. Do you think that's relevant to doing good? That is exactly what people are looking for in research intensive programs. I mean, we're looking for other things as well. Hopefully you have a good background in the content area, right? And hopefully you're interested in the research problems. And then when you bring those skills, th those sort of tendencies, like I'm uh, sort of driven to get an answer to questions and you don't need to tell me to do something for the thing to get done. That is exactly what people are looking for. So I would say if you have somebody who knows you well, in, in a workplace context who supervise you and if you can get them to speak to those qualities, if they know to write about those qualities, that could be a very good reference letter, right? Um, 